What is plyometrics? Well, it's probably the most misused and bandied about term that there is in our uh, vocabulary. Plyometrics means so many different things. It, it, I've seen it go from the original meaning of what plyometrics used to be. And today, plyometrics covers the waterfront. Anything that involves jumping, skipping, hopping, whatever, is all called plyometrics. And you can find many articles that talk about, oh, we do plyometrics. And they do some little baby skips. That's plyometrics. Then you see somebody jumping off a high height and jumping up. That's plyometrics. So no matter what it is today, everybody wants to get on the bandwagon. Yeah, we do plyometrics. Well, as we get more and more people doing this, the term plyometrics loses its meaning. And it's supposed to mean something really sophisticated and, oh, this is really fancy and jazzy. I'm doing plyometrics. Well, it doesn't mean anything. But if you do true plyometrics, and I'm trying to differentiate here, true plyometrics and plyometrics, then we see a world of difference. Now, plyometrics is a term that was created or originated by Fred Wilt, a former track coach and long distance runner, one of our premier runners. He was in the Olympics way back when, uh, who sadly is no longer with us. Uh, but he and I uh, were good friends and he it came up with the term, looked in a dictionary, plyo in metrics. And so it was really a, ter a terrible term, uh, but it kind of caught on. And we had to come up with definitions for it. But when he looked at and, and it, and it was interesting how it came about. He was watching the Russian athletes uh, during the Russian-American track meets that were held back in the 80s uh, in the last century. And he saw the Russian athletes, they're doing all these crazy jump exercises before they meet. They're ready to go on, you know, for their race in about, let's say, uh, 20 minutes or so. And they're doing these crazy jumps. And our athletes are standing there stretching. So there's a world of difference in terms of how the Russians were warming up and how the Americans were warming up. So he couldn't figure this out. He said, now, what in the world are they, why in the world are they doing that? So then it dawned on him, well, it's the jump exercises. That's doing something, activating the muscles to get them ready for the running event or jumping or whatever it might be. So as he kept looking more at this, and then we kind of got together and put our heads together on this. And then we determined, yes, this is why they were doing it, because he involved the stretch shortening reflex. He was getting the muscles activated. So he was really getting the muscles to the point where they're going to be duplicating what they do in the actual run. So it was very specific warm-up to what the muscles had to do during the run. And that's why they were doing it. And it made perfect sense. Whereas our athletes were doing a lot of static stretching. And this has been in vogue and still is to a good extent. But today we finally have, we have, finally have some research backing it up to say that all of this static stretching does not prepare the muscles for action. So we got it. We have. Well, we're starting to move away from this static stretching, although it's still very strong in many uh, areas. But research and practice shows it is not effective. A dynamic warm-up, which includes some of these vigorous jumps, is a lot better. But going back to plyometrics, see, this was still part of what was considered plyos. And let's go back to the origin of them by Dr. Yuri Voroshansky. He was the one that developed this whole concept of what we call plyometrics. But he really called it, see, and I had trouble with this in initially when I did the translation of it. I was the first one to introduce plyometrics as we know it today to the United States. And it was from the works of Voroshansky that I kept up with and I was reading all his materials and translating quite a bit of it. So in a translation of it, I was came up with the term where it could have been either impact or hit. So in other words, he does a an activity like jumping. When you land on the ground, it's a hit or an impact that your body receives. So this was the training. That's why we call it a shock. It was a shock to the system. As soon as you hit the ground, it was a shock. And then you utilize the tension that was built up in the muscles to counteract the shock or impact on landing. 
So you use that energy to take off in your following jump. So I could have called it the shock or the hit method. And this is what he prefers. Because today he said the plyometrics, uh, even though it involves the jumps, he said it is not what I envisioned or what I talked about in my early works. And he's correct. Because when he came up with the shock or impact method, he was talking about the depth jump. This was the number one type of jump used to develop explosive power. So the depth jump was the key. Uh, but if it wasn't a depth jump, there were still other exercises. But these then became jump exercises. Now the jump exercises can still be quite explosive. But they have to be with maximum effort executed in the shortest amount of time. If they're not maximal jumps, where they don't provide maximal impact upon landing and maximal muscle recruitment to counteract and withstand that landing and then give back this energy in a takeoff, then they're not true plyometric or they're not true shock or impact type exercises. That's the key. So all the others are jump exercises, so easy jumping, hopping, skipping, and so on. These are jump exercises. But sadly, we don't recognize them as such. We call them all plyometrics. So this is why I recommend, and personally, I'm getting away from the use of term plyometrics. Or if I do use them, I say true plyometrics as opposed to regular plyometrics. So the true plyometrics would be the shock or hit method. And the regular plyometrics would be any kind of simple jump. Um, so this is one way of separating them, but more importantly, maybe think in terms of the shock or hit method. That's the key. If you think in terms of a shock, that's the key to good explosive plyometric training. See, I hate to even use that term, but it's, it's so ingrained because uh, this is what we call it. So maybe we should get away from the using that term plyometric, but uh, we have other terms like jump training. But since plyometrics came on the scene, nobody uses jump exercises or jump training anymore. So we're not differentiating the different kinds of jumps. See, the depth jump is the true impact or plyometric type jump. Regular jumping is jumping. And the jump training is used for many development of many different physical qualities. One of them, very importantly, is the jump endurance or strength endurance. We use multiple jumps. But it's no longer the shock or impact method if you're going to execute 20 jumps. If it's going to be shock or impact, it only has to be a few, typically no more than 10. Why 10? Because you only have enough ATP to execute about 10 jumps. Once you exhaust that ATP, you don't have the energy to execute quality maximal depth jumps. So anybody doing 20 or 30 jumps, you're doing jump training now. You're developing more endurance rather than explosive power. See, explosive power must be very intense, sharp, clear, quick, not multiple repetitions. All right, we'll be discussing more of explosive training down the road, but I think it's important to recognize the work done by Veroshansky here in developing this hit or shock method uh, as witnessed in the depth jump. But the depth jump from, you know, 30 or so in inches uh, from this height, going higher could be dangerous, lower is good and when you're building up to it, but going lower for a high level athlete, not going to produce results. So the key when doing depth jumps is really to look at how the jump is executed. It's all in the execution. Anytime you're doing plyometric training, the technical aspects of the exercise execution must be perfect. Technique plays a very, very important role. And Vershansky was the first one to bring this out. He says the technique must be perfect. You must have good technique as you do this exercise. Then you can develop the explosive power. But without good technique, you will not get the results. Then you're just developing a physical quality, but it's not explosive power. Okay, so with that in mind, I hope you can see a separation between the impact method or the hit method as opposed to what we call plyometrics. 
So if you're thinking in terms of true explosive power, think in terms of Yuri Boroshansky's definition of the depth jump. That's the key. Then we can separate and use the exercises as they should be used for the particular effect that we want.